it turns out that there is an even more elegant way of uh, finding the force response of a linear circuit to a sinusoidal input okay given that we know the solution to exponential st and we also know that these are linear circuits okay i will show an rc filter here but this applies to any linear system of any order okay i will continue with this example but it could be i mean i could think of a general system here where i apply vp cos omega t to some linear system okay so i will get some let's say vc1 okay so here i am only considering the steady state response parts okay so let's say this vc1 is a steady state and vc2 is a steady state response so vc1 is the steady state response to vp cos omega t plus phi vc2 is the steady state response to vp times sin omega t plus phi okay and we know that this follows superposition okay so the steady state responses follow superposition so what should i do now what could i do let's say i could uh, weight this by some number and this by some other number and add up that will be the response to weighting this by some number and weighting this by this number okay isn't it or if i imagine this rc filter with alpha times this as the input and beta times that as the input the steady state response will be alpha times vc1 plus beta times vc2 is this part convincing right this is just straight forward superposition so the interesting thing is now let's say this is 1 and this is j okay i'll take vp cos omega t plus phi plus j times vp sin omega t plus phi this is all in your head i mean don't worry about how we get j times vp as a voltage okay so what is the actual input that you are applying this is equivalent to applying an input of vp exponential j omega t plus phi and the response to that is right now the solution to this i already know what is it what is the steady state solution to vp exponential j omega t plus phi for this particular circuit i have two linear systems the first one has an input vp cos omega t plus phi second one has an input vp sin omega t plus phi the first one has a response vc1 second one has a response vc2 so if i apply to a third system so maybe i will show those pictures so let's say the response is vc1 to vp cos omega t plus phi and the response is vc2 to vp sin omega t plus phi and so if i have vp times alpha cos omega t plus phi plus beta times sin omega t plus phi the steady state response would be alpha times vc1 plus beta times vc2 that is okay so clearly this works for any alpha and beta so i will use alpha equal to 1 beta equals to j so the response to vp exponential j omega t plus phi would be 
vc1 plus j times vc2 okay so what is the response of our circuit to vp exponential j by d plus pi what is the response to vp exponential st what was it the steady state response vp by 1 plus scr exponential st okay so this is nothing but vp exponential j phi exponential j omega t okay so the solution to this is vp exponential j phi by 1 plus j omega cr exponential j omega t okay and i can put that phi back there okay i can write it as also vp exponential j omega t plus phi by 1 plus j omega cr okay the answer i already know that's the advantage here i did the superposition the input turns out to be vp exponential j omega t plus phi and the answer to that i already know then what if i write the differential equation separately this one is rc dvc1 by dt plus vc1 equals vp cos omega t plus phi and rc dvc2 by dt plus vc2 is vp sin omega t plus phi the key here is these coefficients are all real if those coefficients were imaginary which is a perfectly valid uh, Uh, linear differential equation we couldn't do this okay then you would get cross terms i mean this can give you that and so on the only place we get this square root of minus 1 is where we do the superposition okay we multiply this by 1 and we multiply this by j and then we add it up okay so the only place where this j appears is when it multiplies this one because of that when you compute the response to vp exponential j omega t plus phi the real part is the response here and the imaginary part is the response there okay the key thing here is that this is a linear system whose differential equation has only real coefficients okay now of course any circuit will follow that because all our component values are real okay but it's possible to construct differential equations with i mean i can just put a j here you can find the solution to that but then you can't say that the real part is coming from there okay because you could also get a complex part just because of j that's inside the system okay so this is the real part and this is the imaginary part this fine so this is just a way of uh, superposing cos and sin to get complex exponential and uh, solutions to complex exponential in general are simpler algebraically compared to the solutions to sinusoids there are the same solution of course in uh, spirit but the formulas look a little more messy because i had this alpha cos uh, omega t plus beta sin omega t and then i had to find the constants and so on now this is an easier way of doing it of course while doing this you will get the same answer so i strongly urge you to try all three methods okay this is a, first of all a very very simple circuit so you put a solution as alpha cos plus beta sin find the constants you as decompose the cos as exponential plus j omega exponential minus j omega find the solution and finally you do this you will get the solution what is the solution then what is vc1 what is the force response what is the real part of this if this is the source r and c the solution is vp by 1 plus j omega cr exponential j omega t plus phi okay this is the force response again we are only talking about the force response here and if you had vp cos omega t plus phi as the excitation the response would be the real part of this so what is the real part of this the real part of this okay and what is that I'm very anxious to do it. First of all, uh, I assume you are already pretty comfortable with uh, calculations involving complex numbers. There are two forms of uh, 
complex numbers. This is known as a rectangular form where you give the x and y coordinates of the complex number or the polar form which gives you the amplitude and the argument or the angle. Okay. Now, both representations are useful. Clearly, this is more convenient for adding complex numbers. This is more convenient for multiplying complex numbers. Okay. So, if I use this here, what do I have? 1 by 1 plus j omega c r. What is the amplitude of this? Amplitude. That is the amplitude and the argument is minus tan inverse omega c r. Okay. There are so many ways of doing it or you rationalize uh, so that you get the real de denominator and then a complex numerator and so on. Okay. So, finally, the response to this turns out to be E p by square root of 1 plus omega c r square and cos of omega t plus phi minus tan inverse omega c r. Okay. So, you apply a sinusoid to a a uh, linear system, what you get out is a sinusoid of exactly the same frequency, the amplitude will be uh, changed and the phase will be changed. How much the amplitude will be changed and how much the phase will be changed depend on uh, the circuit. Okay. So, this is the amount of uh, phase change right? and this is the factor by which the amplitude is changed. So, that clearly depends on the circuit as well as frequency. Okay. So, you can also once you have uh, capacitors in the picture or inductors, you can have uh, frequency selective circuits that is circuits which behave differently at different frequencies. Clearly, you can see from this expression itself that if omega is very large, the amplitude of the output will be very small and if omega is very small, the amplitude is, is the same as the input okay? and very small is compared to 1 by Rc. Okay? So, if omega Cr is much smaller than 1, the output amplitude is Vp. If it is much more than 1, it is inversely proportional to omega. Okay? So, the response, the real part of this has a cosine whose amplitude is Vp divided by square root of 1 plus omega square C square R square. and whose argument is omega t plus phi minus tan inverse omega c r. Okay? Most important thing you notice here is that if you apply a sinusoid to a linear system, the force response will be a sinusoid of exactly the same frequency. Okay? You cannot generate any new frequencies from a linear system. right? You apply cos omega t, you are only going to get cos omega t. Its amplitude is changed, its phase is changed, that is all. Okay? But this is a very, very important uh, aspect of uh, linear systems that will be useful for everything, both for analysis and measurement and testing. Okay?